Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today is part 10 of the AI series where we're implementing a flying enemy. This was a question on Reddit from Real Fishwind. In this video, we're going to quickly model a jet in Pro Builder inside of Unity, color it with vertex colors, do a default hovering animation, make it be a ranged enemy that attacks the player, obviously add it to our enemy spawner, and then we'll look at how to make our player be able to or not be able to attack the flying enemy because remember our player actually just punches and it's kind of hard to reach a jet. So we'll look at how to configure our physics layers so different types of units can, can or cannot attack other types of units. So we'll have the player that can attack ground units only and also a different layer where you can change the player's attack radius to be on, and then it can attack both land and air units. The last thing I think is really cool about this video is this is a zero code video. We're not touching Visual Studio at all in this, so if you've already checked out all the previous ones, just open the editor and take a look. We're just gonna configure a bunch of stuff, and that's it. The first thing we're going to do in this video is create our flying enemy. I'm going to model this with Pro Builder, which you can get to by going to Tools, Pro Builder, Pro Builder window. So we're going to do some speed 3D modeling with Pro Builder right here. I start with just a basic cube, shrink it and extrude out some of the in each direction I want. I know the basic shape is going to be like an airplane, so that's kind of where we get this T shape. And then I just kind of made it up from there. Now that we've created our enemy, let's make a new AI type. So we'll go to the window navigation, click plus on the enemy types, create a new one, and we'll name it flying enemy. And the way that we are actually gonna implement flying enemies is a little bit different than you might expect. We're gonna start with how I expected it to work at least, and then we'll go into how should you actually do it. So starting with what I thought we would do, I thought that we'd set the radius much like we do with all the other enemies and put the radius to be you know as bad as the enemy is and the height to be approximately the height of the enemy and then i thought i would just give it a really high step height so that way it would be able to step taller than these obstacles so i wanted to make it where it would step over the one and two meter tall boxes but not the all the way up to the very top like the second floor kind of thing so i thought i'd give it a step height of like two and give it a huge max slope so that way it would be able to just climb up basically everything it's not quite right i'll select the world geometry add a new nav mesh surface there for our flying enemy and we see we get some warnings that step height is too tall and it'll actually clamp us to 0.3. And our max slope is also too high and it's gonna clamp it down for us. So whenever I bake this, it doesn't do it right because they're clamping our values for us. I'm gonna set the height to 2.75 and the radius to 0.25. That's the numbers I've settled on so it, it can fly under the second floor. And if I bake, we see that it actually is going to path the same way as a normal enemy. That's because we attached the nav mesh modifier to these cubes and we made it so it's not walkable. So if I search for nav mesh modifier and I select all of them, what I'm going to do is change all of them to have the affected agents 
be everybody but the flying enemy. So remember that's going to make it where only the player enemy one and tall enemy will think it's not walkable and the flying enemy after I rebake you can see can walk over them. And with the step height, it looks like it's okay. But there's kind of some weirdness here, right? Where it looks like the agent's gonna go up at a weird angle. On the nav mesh surface, I'm gonna override the voxel size. So I have something like four voxels per agent radius, and that's 0 0.0625. And that kind of tightens up the nav mesh a little bit. Changing the voxel size makes it Unity more accurately use the input geometry for the nav mesh baking. The higher voxels per agent radius you put, the more accurate the nav mesh is, but also the longer it takes to bake. Generally, you don't have to manage this at all. It's usually pretty good by default. And Unity also recommends not going over eight voxels per agent radius because they say that doesn't add much any benefit. And over here I see, uh, well, I need to probably still include the nav mesh modifier as not walkable for this for the flying enemy as well. So on the arches, I'll change it to back to affected all agents all and rebake the mesh and that looks better. If we come over to this kind of corridor, let's make the level a little bit more interesting by shrinking this to two meters tall. That way our flying enemy can get on top of these. I'll re-enable all the nav mesh surfaces and then we'll start setting up our enemy. I'll attach the nav mesh agent, the enemy script, and create the attack radius. The attack radius will just be a sphere collider as a child again. I'll rename it to be attack radius, add the arranged attack radius script to that, drag the nav mesh agent over, and I'm going to adjust the radius here just to see how far it makes sense for him. I think seven's probably too big, maybe four is nicer. On the enemy, I'll drag the attack radius script, I'll drag the animator. Attach the enemy movement. Set up the agent link mover to actually just move at normal speed. I think that makes more sense for the flying enemy type. Again, attach the animator there. Hook up the movement and the agent to the enemy script. And then I'll drag the flying enemy down to the project panel to make it a prefab. Now create the enemy configuration for flying enemy. Drag the flying enemy prefab we just created to the prefab. Set the health to maybe 50. The acceleration to 12 which should be a little bit faster acceleration here we'll change the base offset to 2 because we want the model to be flying higher the height again is 2.75 that's what we set up in the navigation panel and i'm going to set the obstacle avoidance to no obstacle avoidance because we don't want the flying enemy to try to have to path around other enemies we want it to fly over them so that's why we're putting no obstacle avoidance there the radius again 0.25 to match what we put in the baking the speed i'm going to set to 2 actually i think since it's going to be flying over everything it should maybe move a little bit slower and stopping distance i'll put at one that will make the attack configuration and the attack configuration will mark it as is ranged is true set the damage to be something small i'll use two and the attack radius again as four attack delay 0.1 so he shoots a whole bunch drag the homing bullet prefab to the bullet prefab the bullet spawn offset i actually put two here to align it with the model but it really should be like negative 0.1 or something so it spawns just below the model and we also need to set the line of sight layers to be default and player so that way the bullets will hit correctly the last thing on the configuration side is we need to drag the attack configuration to the enemy scriptable object attack configuration so the enemy knows how to attack one more important thing we need to make sure we disable the nav mesh agent on the prefab so that way it doesn't spawn with the nav mesh agent enabled trying to place itself on a nav mesh and giving you warnings now we have a model, but this model is not animated. So I'm going to create a flying enemy animation controller. Select my model and create a new animation called the hover. I'm just going to make this enemy kind of hover up and down wherever it is since planes don't stand perfectly still. I'll make it go negative 0 0.25 to 0 to plus 0 0.33, something like that.
The other important thing is we need to make sure this has all the same parameters as the other enemies do. So that's attack, jump, landed, and is walking as the boolean. If we don't have these on the animation controller, then whenever we're trying to set these triggers or bools, we'll get a bunch of warnings or errors logged in the console about this animation controller doesn't have whatever parameter we're trying to set. So we're really adding these to avoid having those warnings. In your game, most likely you'd want to implement something for all of these for the sake of time and uh, because I'm not a super great model or an animator, I'm not going to go and add in all of these things, but that's something that for your game you should actually do. Now we'll adjust the physics layers here. I'm going to change the attack radius to be the enemy attack radius. I'm going to remove the collider from the model and add a box collider to the flying enemy. That way whenever the flying enemy comes into the attack radiuses, they'll correctly be attacked. I'll adjust the size to be approximately the same size as this jet thing is. And don't forget to attach the rigid body component to the flying enemy. Also, the flying enemy needs to be on the enemies layer, so if you haven't changed that, make sure that's there as well. If we jump back to the scene, we'll select our enemy spawner, make it spawn only one enemy, and make it be the flying enemy. That way we can just really focus on how this guy works. And then when I click play, I see the enemy finds me, correctly starts shooting at me. But if I get really close to that flying enemy, we'll see that my Unity Chan model starts pointing up to look at him, doing this kind of jump back and forth thing. And it's really not ideal because I can't, I shouldn't be able to punch the air like this, right? So there's something wrong here. If I select the Unity Chan attack radius and the flying enemy collider we can see that's what's happening the model is turning down to look at my unity chan model and then it's within range i think even if it didn't do the turn it would still be within range and then she'd still attack so there's two ways that you can address this one is the easy way in this case but also kind of more error prone and you might get bugs out of and that's to just raise the base offset of the model to be three if we do that and re-enable the nav mesh agent we'll see that the jet is actually higher now so even if i go stand directly under it again i can't hit it but the problem here is if i was on the second floor and the jet was right there it would still be able to attack me and i would also be able to attack it so there's if you have different elevations this kind of a solution won't work to solve that let's take a look at how to set up the physics layers so we don't have that same problem i'll navigate back to the tags and layers and i'll add a new layer called player combo attack radius and another one called air enemy. If you think about this from like a real time strategy perspective, usually you have land attack only units, air attack only units, and then ones that can do both. So that's where I got this combo name. If you are creating a real time strategy game, I would start with your physics layers to think about all the different kinds of units that you're going to have and think about who should be able to attack which other kinds so that way you can set up the layers effectively for your game. I'll then open up the project settings because we need to adjust the physics interactions. Go to the physics and I'll deselect basically everything. We'll have the player combo attack radius be able to intersect with enemy and air enemy. And air enemy should only intersect with player combo attack radius. Since we don't have an air only attacking layer, that should be the only intersection. We'll then go update the flying enemy to be on the air enemy layer. And I'll reset the base offset to be two. If I click play again, you can see that this flying enemy will fly over the small boxes, even the taller boxes, and chase me the entire time. If I run to the other side of the level, where we lowered the walls, we'll see that the flying enemy goes up that 2 meter tall wall and hovers on top of them. As I run around it, you can see that it easily walks up and walks down the ledge and continues to attack me. and come under the flying enemy. We'll see the flying enemy's collider intersects with the attack radius, but because it's now on a layer that the player attack radius does not intersect with, my player won't attack. If we change the enemy to be on the enemy layer instead of the air enemy layer, we'll see that the player starts attacking this enemy again because the physics layers collide. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video, and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe so you can keep getting value every Tuesday when the new videos come out. Adding in flying enemies is a great way to add more gameplay depth into your game.
and understanding how to make some units being able to attack other units or not is a really important lesson that I hope you got out of this video. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic like this video was, or if you're implementing AI into your game as a result of watching this series, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.